Seventh house, Saturn is transiting my seventh house, Saturn is learning my seventh house, Saturn is aspecting my seventh house, Saturn is doing something with my seventh house. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's aspecting my seventh lord. He's conjunct my seventh lord. He's in parivartan with my seventh lord. Something to do with the seventh house. Everybody not everybody, most of the people will have Saturn doing something or the other with either the seventh house directly or the Lord of the seventh house. Mm. Or you will find Saturn doing something with the Karaka of the seventh house, which is Venus for a man and Jupiter for a woman. <laughs> So now when you have all these or, you know, some of these or even one of these uh, crazy things which Saturn is doing. So he's either conjunct, aspecting or you know, he's in Parivartan. One of the three with these, these planets or this, uh, this seventh house then. Uh, or uh, as I said, you know, if he's even transiting the seventh house and in transit he's aspecting the seventh or in transit he's aspecting the seventh lord. Okay. Of your original birth chart. So does it mean uh, my marriage will end in a divorce? Or they say, they say <laughs> that if Saturn is associated with the seventh house, then there is no divorce. It's like a painful, never ending uh, marriage, which either uh, you stay, which you decide to stay for some uh, reason, or. Mm, um, <laughs> It's not a nice situation. This is what they say, right? So, so what is it? So, if Saturn is associated with the seventh house, does it mean that either I'll be divorced or I will have a very bad marriage? So, as per that logic, uh, every Leo and Cancer Lagna should have a bad marriage, right? Because Saturn is the lord of the seventh house, right? Mm. And as per that logic, if anybody has Saturn in the Lagna, uh, 5th or 7th or 10th should have a terrible marriage because from the Lagna 5th and 10th, Saturn will aspect the 7th house. And what to speak of, if he's himself placed in the 7th house in the Bhav chart. So it should be a very bad situation, right? Well, let us understand uh, what actually Saturn is and how, how do you read all these placements, okay? So, as usual, if you are new, then please subscribe to the channel. And if you want to watch other videos on Saturn, you will surely find them in my channel, okay? There's a Saturn playlist also. And if you want a consultation from me regarding your marriage, career, health, relationships, anything else, then you can always find my website down in the description section to book a consultation. And yes, God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will find him. And if you like this video, stick to the end and click the, hit the thumbs up. <laughs> okay, so what is Saturn? Saturn is discipline, regulation, restriction, reality, practical life scenarios, uh, things which we do not, which we wish were not there. <laughs> is there anything in your life or in this world you wish were not, were not there, you know? Uh, why, why was this there? Why was it required? <laughs> Can I do away with this? You know, ye nahi hota, to kya hota na life. That, that is exactly what is Saturn. That is exactly, uh, these are exactly the traits of uh, the planet Saturn. Okay. So, so now you have to understand when you make a blanket statement like Saturn associates with all these parameters with the seventh house, there's divorce or there's a bad marriage, then it shows there is a lack of fundamental understanding of how a comprehensive analysis has to be done. Which means if you say that Saturn is in the 10th house, let's talk of career for a second. You, know, you say Saturn is in the 10th, so my career is destroyed or I'll have delays in career. Or either way around, you say Saturn associating with the seventh, you know, problem with marriage. Then you, then that means if you say like this, it means you think or you believe or you have seen some video somewhere where the person is saying or trying to convince you that one placement decides everything. You know, just see, just think of one area like marriage. 
how many houses are involved for marriage? Can you guess? My God. Almost every house. Primarily, there are three houses. The second, seventh, and eleventh. Second house shows your family. Seventh house is the spouse, your spouse in the sense, your interactions with your spouse. And eleventh house is Labhasthan, fulfillment of desire. But then there is uh, before there, there, there is a marriage, before the wedding is finalized, there is the third house, which is the house of negotiations and discussions. Then there is the fifth house, which is the house of children. Right. Then there's the ninth house, which is, you know, your seniors in uh, father, father-in-law and all this. And then there's the eighth house, which is directly your in-laws. Right. And then there's 10th house, you know, your status, your position in society that that also plays a big role. Right. For your marriage. <laughs> then there's 12th house, which is sexuality. So every freaking house is having something to do with marriage. Every house. Fourth house, my God, is the house of the house, the home. <laughs> it's the house of the house, right? It's not exactly the home, but it is the house, okay? So did I miss any house? And Lagna, your body, your appearance, how much attractive you are, how flamboyant, how smart, how beautiful, how charming you are. Mm, does it play a role in the marriage or in getting married? <laughs> <laughs> right so so every freaking house sixth house oh wow sixth house is so much related to marriage because it's the denial of marriage <laughs> it's as equally important as the seventh house for marriage because the seventh house gives you marriage and the sixth house denies you marriage right so having a prominent sixth house can sometimes deny you marriage that is also something related to the marriage right so therefore you have to understand that every damn house, every damn planet is doing something or the other for marriage. So if you just see one placement and then you make a rule that, you know, okay, I have Saturn here, I have Saturn there. For career, it's good, bad. Now, of course, you may say that Saturn is here. It may not aid in a good marriage. That is a separate statement. That is a very responsible statement. But if you uh, want to judge married life, you have to see, first of all, you have to see the Lagna Lord. For every everything in life, you must check the Lagnesh because the Lagnesh will tell you what is this person's inclination. Is this person ready to uh, stick to somebody or something in life or no? Is the person will this person keep hopping from one person to the other like you know like dogs and donkeys well then maybe not the best chart to uh, for marriage right because there's a fundamental flaw in the person the person cannot stick to somebody okay so then the marriage cannot work because today you are attracted to this person so you are in a relationship in uh, another two, three years, you are attracted to somebody else and then you are married to somebody else or you have an extramarital affair or you, you don't marry out of fear, right? So the Lagnesh will tell you, then the son will tell you, what do you believe about life in general? Is commitment important to you? What are your mutual values, shared interests? You know, what are non-negotiables for you? In the marriage, then the moon will tell you what are you looking emo for emotional comfort, you know, emotional shelter and all this. You know, what are you looking? It's very, 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 very important in, in traditional astrology. The Guna Milan is done through the moon, right? The nakshatra of the moon for the boy and the girl, they, they decide all this, you know, points. And then you have Mercury. What is uh, what, what are things that you like to communicate? Okay, well, what is the definition of communication for you? Is it just like speaking or is it something at a deeper level? Why, why do you communicate at all? Why the hell do you open your mouth? That is what your Mercury tells you, right? Then, then who is the next planet? Well, you have Jupiter, right? Jupiter shows your morals, your uh, spiritual inquisitiveness, your... And desire to let things keep going even if uh, times are very bad okay and then you have saturn saturn is you know the brutal reality of this material world that it's it's a crazy miserable place you know material world as lord krishna says in the bhagavad gita dukhala mashashvatam it's a place of misery right so are you ready to go through the miseries of life with your spouse or with anybody <laughs> 
<laughs> father, mother, children, anybody. Are you ready to do that? Or are you just looking for quick fixes? You know? And then you have Rahu Ketu. And then, of course, who can forget Venus, who is the natural Karaka for uh, the seventh house, right? Uh, Venus shows attraction, beauty, sexuality, romance, you know, Rajasik love, you know, the love of 2023. <laughs> and then you have Mars. Mars is anger, passion, aggression, like uh, violence and all this. You know, Can you control your anger? So every freaking planet matters for your marriage. So I have shown every house and then every planet. And of course, you can forget Rahu Ketu. You know, how do you deal with uncertainties in life? That is what your Rahu Ketu will tell you about yourself, right? <clears throat> so when you, when you see all these parameters... And then you see the second, uh, the the seventh and the eleventh and the fifth and the ninth. These five houses are, they're like very crucial. No, once you see all this, then you know what, what is the character of this person? Is there a fundamental flaw? Is the person, uh, will this person cheat? Will this person uh, just, if he's a man, you know, will he just say, oh, I can't maintain this marriage, you know, it's too much, you know, I prefer to be single, you know, he tells his wife, go back uh, to, to your parents' house or something like that, or if, or if he says, or if he's just drunk and he's like not doing any work and not maintaining the family, so what, what is like the fundamental flaw that this person is? Is he lazy? Is he a drunkard? Is he a sexual addict? He's watching adult material. He's uh, flirting around with other uh, women, even if he's married, you know, or even if he's in a relationship. What the hell is this person doing? What will this person do? What is like the mentality? So if you do not know all this from the chart and then you just say, oh, Saturn is here, there, you know, but my marriage will end. Well, no, then that that is a very half-hearted analysis because... <clears throat> Uh, Saturn in 7th or transiting in 7th can mean that uh, things take a bit more time for you to stabilize. But if the overall chart says that you are a good person, you means not just you, you and your spouse. There are no fundamental problems. Fundamental problems in the sense, there are no fundamental problems, you know, like, uh, of course, everybody has laziness and, you know, uh, uh, tendencies to look outside. But is it within a level which you can control or is it beyond a certain extent you know that it is spilling out okay so if <clears throat> if the fundamental flaws are within control and you are optimistic in general and you like you you want to compromise you can compromise then even if saturn is associating with all these factors these houses then there could be some delays and disappointments and setbacks but you will eventually make it work okay but if all the things are negative and then Saturn is associating, then it can make matters worse. But just by seeing your Saturn to say that you're going to get divorced. Oh my God, this is like, this is criminal actually. This should be banned, okay? Banned not just in a sense of law, <clears throat> um, but... Uh, yeah, it should be consciously seen that, you know, the, these statements give a very bad name to astrology and to astrologers. Okay? So therefore, please make sure that you analyze your overall chart and then come into a come to a conclusion because otherwise um, you, you will make blanket statements, overly generalistic statements and it will not do justice to you or to your husband, wife, or anybody you know, and the biggest injustice it will do is to astrology as a science right and that is why people say oh astrology doesn't work because they will say oh saturn in first house aspecting seventh my marriage is finished but i can show you 100 examples where saturn is in the first second fifth seventh eleventh you know, and tenth and it is linked with the sec second house seventh house eleventh house but still the marriage is doing fine why because the overall chart is strong overall chart is good for marriage and Magical number, magical word uh, is the dashas. What, what does the Mahadasha and Antardasha indicate? Okay. So that is like the icing on the cake. So overall chart, then Mahadasha, Antardasha. And on top of that, you add transits. Okay. So 
learn to do a comprehensive analysis, look at every parameter and then try to judge the final strength of an institution like marriage. Do not do it just from one house or one planet or one placement. Okay. Thank you very much for your patience. And if you're new, then please subscribe to the channel. And if you like this video, hit the thumbs up and share it with somebody who is very much worried about Saturn in the seventh or associated with the seventh. Okay. God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will find him. And if you want a consultation from me, my website is also down below. Thank you.